Hey everyone, Jabez here from the Library Scoop and I have crossed the border to Morning Grove and I'm here at Cappy's. We're going to meet the new mayor, Mayor George. Uh, he's going to be the new mayor of Niles. Now, let's go on in. Perfect. So the first thing I would like you to do is I just want you to introduce yourself, um, Mayor George. My name is Mayor George D.L. Pajamas, uh, and very excited that uh, I won this past election, uh, along with the entire slate, the Nile Stronger Party, uh, both incumbents, Net O'Donovan Matthias, as well as John Jackett, and somebody who isn't a newcomer but came back to run alongside of us, uh, Joe Laverde, uh, all won. Um, and and it, it, it's an exciting moment. It's an exciting moment for all of us um, and for the village more so. Um, you know, we, we've got a team right now that really believes in uh, commitment and, uh, and giving back to the community. Um, people said, George, you've got five kids in six restaurants. Why are you running? And I said, well, the way that my mother and father brought me up, they were really, really big in the giving back to the community. We did so growing up, you know, through our church and a lot of uh, philanthropic uh, uh, groups there. Uh, and, you know, I, I just really believe that, you know, the, the country has been divided for quite a long time and divided probably more so now than ever. And uh, you know what, it, it's, the change has got to start here at the ground level, you know, in the communities by really making an effort getting people together and you know doing the next right thing absolutely well thank you for sharing it thank you for uh, coming on the podcast with us sure um i did a little homework on you prior to our conversation and i know that you uh you've been living in niles for over two decades now yeah. uh, so my first question to you is like how did you find yourself in niles why niles and what makes the village special for you and your family uh, well, I'll tell you this one. So I was born and raised in the city of Chicago on the north side around Bryn Mawr in California. Great neighborhood, called Long Woods. Uh, but my father, uh, my father had a restaurant called the Palace Grill on uh, Madison and Loomis. And when he sold it to my uncle, my cousin George, uh, he came up north and opened up Cappy's. Uh, so Cappy's, just a quick little denotation of history, uh, was built in 1958. It was the first big boy that was built in the state of Illinois. Mm. Um, and as uh, some of the other fast food joints, you know, did their damage uh, to the big boy concept, uh, it was one of the first ones to close as well. And my father saw an opportunity uh, to come up north and open up um, an expansive Greek diner. And um, so I started working with my dad as a child. Uh, I started working with my dad actually when I was about eight years old. And um, my father uh, opened up Cappy's. I came up there and started working with him there at the age of 13. Uh, did my rounds uh, throughout the restaurant, but it was really like being in a neighborhood. It really was, you know, so I was raised in Niles, quote unquote, uh, just because of the restaurant being, you know, right there on the Morton Grove Niles border, yet never had the zip code. And I just wound up, I fell upon a house that I fell in love with and uh, the price was right and the taxes are still ungodly low and uh so we bought it and made our house a home looking up your background in prior to this conversation you're very involved in the community i think you mentioned that earlier um so this question for you is how important is it for you to continue to be involved in local community events and activities while being mayor uh, i'm one of those guys that leads by example um you know and for God's sake, so I'm not bragging, but, you know, at the restaurant, I bust tables and I'll wash dishes and cook and, you know, and, and my staff sees it and they always get behind me and besides me and, and, and work like that. And that's the way my parents, once again, that brought me up. Um, and, you know, to me, this is, it's a service to the community as well. And we need to lead by example. I'm a firm believer in leading by example, uh, you know, we're not sitting up at that dais in a monarchy or a parliament or anything else. You know, you got, you, know, you have myself and six other, six other members of the community who love the community, that believe in the community, that pretty much donate their time uh, really to make this community just a better place to live in. And there's a lot of good things that are going to be coming down the pipeline. Uh, it's very fortunate that 
the board is pretty well like-minded. Uh, we're, for God's sakes, we're not bobbleheads and everyone's got their opinions. Uh, but at the end of the day, everyone's heart is in the right place. And it's going to be a very exciting time uh, for the village of Niles and for the future of the village as well. I've already warned my family they may see me a little bit less. Uh, my wife smiled about that and said, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> just joking. Um, and my kids are a little bit older now. My youngest is now 11. My oldest is 26. So it's a, it's a good time that, of course, they need their parents always, but it's not when they're very younger and more formidable in their years. It, they're, they're, my children are all off to a pretty good good start. So if I need to go to you know a few extra events a month or what have you, then it's very doable right now. It's just um, I'm really at a, a prime time in my life that I'll be able to do so. I'm really excited about talking about these changes and also the what's gonna the future of Niles, and that's where we're sure. gonna get to in, in a bit. What made you want to be the mayor, and how did you get involved in uh, public service? Uh, well, that's that's really a good question. So you know, I grew up in the 40th ward in Chicago, Pat O'Connor's ward, and Pat did a just a hell of a job. Uh, and and I'll tell you, you know, back in the day, the aldermen and the mayor and Everybody, were, they were very, very big in sponsoring basketball tournaments. And uh, I boxed in Ed Kelly's uh, boxing program at Wells Park. Uh, Pat O'Connor, John Giocaris, uh, committeemen and aldermen had basketball tournaments in the local park district. And it was something that I grew up around. And I believe that their offices were being well used to better the community. To, I guess in a roundabout way, they were keeping kids off the street because we all know that, you know, idle time is a devil's playground. And and I believed in it. And, you know, I did some work over here and helped the alderman as well. Nobody ever asked. We just decided to help him out since he was doing good for the community. The community should get behind him. So uh, when I did move into Niles in September of 2000, uh, Mayor Blaze at the time said, he said, George, well, welcome. And now that you're settled in, I'm making you my precinct captain. And I said, well, thanks a lot, Nick. I says, I got three, young, I had three young kids at home. And uh, he said, Booby, you got to give back. And, and I believe in it. And, and I did. And there were referendums that we went out and pushed for and things of that nature. And uh, a year later, uh, in uh, 2001, I believe it was June, uh, I was appointed uh, by the chairman of the zoning board to the zoning board committee. And about a month later, uh, I looked at Nick, who I told you was at the restaurant just about every morning uh, with his little group of guys. And I said, Nick, I said, I'm going to be mayor of Niles one day. And he looked at me and he said, OK. And that, that was actually almost 20 years ago to the date. I mean, oh, wow. that was in July of 2001. Wow. So, so it's a, to, yeah, two, it was two, meant to be. Yeah, two, two decades in the working. Uh, so you're a, a successful chef, restaurateur. How would you use these experience to help you transition to the role of, as a mayor? I worked under some of the best chefs in the United States and, you know, wound up becoming a James Beard chef. And I, I sort of have to attribute that to, you know, taking the good out of those kitchens and leaving the bad behind me. And I think that in life in general, you take your good out of whatever you see and leave the bad where you where it was so many other things like the all-american city and the chicago parent we'll talk about that in a few moments sure uh, but i've been talking to patrons for the past couple of weeks um, and i told them i was going to speak with you and we we're talking about priorities and that's just my next question to you is what are your pr first priorities as mayor well our first priority is, of course is uh we're going to light a fire under <clears throat> the people that have golf mill uh it's time for them to get moving I mean, okay. this has been, it's been going on a long time. You know, with that area uh, being picking up, um, I think that it's going to bring a lot to the village. It's going to bring more shopping. It's going to bring, mm -hmm. you know, a new, uh, new style of housing to the village. Um, it's, it's going to do a lot for our tax base. You know, all that, that influx of money and everything else builds a stronger community. Uh, it's going to invite more people to come visit Niles and find out, hey, this is a great place to live. And I think that the housing market, of course, as that grows and as the values go up, I think that that's going to sort of make for just that much more of a more fiscally sound community, which ultimately we're putting money in 
and believing in the homeowners, they're going to put money back into the community and keep the businesses thriving. And, you know, it's, Absolutely. it all goes around Robin. Absolutely. You, you sound like to, uh, to me, like a more business oriented leadership and that's what is that? Is that correct? Or we'll have Bevez, you, you couldn't, you could not have said it any better. If you're running like a business and you run it efficiently and you watch your costs yet continually to provide the same services that you have, it's going to benefit our citizens, our businesses, and the entire community as well. And I agree with that. It's it's more like making sure that we're above water, but making sure that everyone who, every citizen in the village elevates. It doesn't matter if it's property, business, personally, uh, professionally, all of that. So we're all in this together as a community. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I had an opportunity to speak with Mayor Chevelle <laughs> in the last year. And I asked him the same question. And I'm going to ask you this question as well. You mentioned earlier that Niles is ranked as one of the best places to raise a family. And we were awarded an All-American City um, some time ago. Uh, with the new leadership, and also we're now in uh, 2021, do you still think that these values and awards that we've received are still validated? I do. Uh, I think that they've been forgotten. And when I say they're forgotten, there's, there's a great new push here in the village of Niles and it is, you know, love Niles. And there's a heart with the Niles everywhere that we're starting to see on bumper stickers and everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and I love it. I think the initiative is great. And I actually talked to staff about this uh, prior to the election and then after the election as well. I says we need to give people what they need to know to love Niles. For instance, like we were talking about the bike path in the North Branch and the nature and everything. And people don't realize you could get on that bike path to go all the way to Green Bay, Wisconsin on it. You sure uh, can. Yes. Uh, and how many people, you know, do we do enough jointly within the, ourselves to, to promote the library? Do we do enough to promote our mid-century modern architecture? Do we do enough to promote uh what we really are or have we always just sort of gotten these plaques and these wards and laid them up somewhere and put them on a street post and said because that's not what's going to get you there it's the hard work that got us those right the hard work that continues afterwards to right. constantly promote what we are doing um and right. let's talk about why we got it and revisit it and where do we need to fine-tune some of our our skills or onsets or, or services or what got us to that point and what can we do to really continue on with that and best place to raise a family you know let's revisit that and see what more we can do to take what was given to us right. and continue on to the next level right and i agree with you and i think this is the mold of our conversation thus far we talked about how niles diversity and, and it's just like not a, a lot of the citizens were born here and and they have been raised to believe that you have a chance here in America and you have so many opportunities. We live almost near Chicagoland, every Northern suburbs. So those opportunities are here. And the Love um, Niles initiative, I was just gonna ask you that and your thoughts about it, but clearly answered it. But I just wanna continue this. Well, you, you led me well into it. I'm not gonna take that <laughs> away from it. You led me very well into that. After uh, much of our conversation. I'm excited for the future of Niles and our neighbor and partnerships. I think what you said is true. It's just like there's values that are not there anymore and you just want to reinstill those values for further generations to continue and you see brighter things for Niles and I'm excited to see how that goes and I just wish you the best of luck and with your team and uh, just knowing that you have supporters pulling for you. Well, thank you, Jabez. And I, and I just want to say, and my mother, unfortunately, she's not here right now, or I would bring her on and say hi real quick, but <laughs> we're still in my mother's house every Sunday night for dinner, the whole family. Oh, wow. And, you know, there's anywhere from 12 to 15, 18 of us sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it all starts at home. It really does start at home. And just reminding people, because we were all raised a certain way and we all no right from wrong and we all know you know god willing and the ones that haven't take a look around you but you know 
we, we're all raised in a family in one fashion or the other. And there's always yeah. safety and good in families. And you take that and you broaden it, broaden it upon it. So I'm very excited. I'm excited, not for myself. I'm excited for my board. I'm excited for staff. I'm excited for the community. Um, there's a lot of good coming in, uh, a lot of good coming ahead of us. Well, I can't wait to see him. Well, thank uh, you. There's a lot of changes um, in some people's interpretation that could be good or bad. Um, and we live uh, in certain times in the village and also in the country as well for obvious reasons. We're not going get, to get into it now. But um, I want you to have the last uh, word, and I just want you to answer this question for us. And it's just like, what would you say to citizens or whoever is listening to this podcast to help them get through these unsettling times? What would you say to those? Well, I, once again, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, and I just think that people need to be seen as people, not yeah. for what they may be or who they are. There's good and bad in everybody, Jabez. Uh, listen, growing up, and it's 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 not a big secret. You know, I was a pretty wild kid. I really was, mm. and it didn't mean at any given moment that every Greek boy that walked down the street was a wild kid. You know, there were a lot of good Greek seventeen-year-old kids, mm -hmm. and people saw past that. And I I think that we all just need to look for the good in things. Everyone needs to see, listen, there's three sets of people out there. People think there's two, there's three. There's people that don't, there are people that see the glass half full. There's mm -hmm. people that see the glass half empty. There's people that don't even see the damn glass. And it's like, you know, you gotta get off that. The glass is always half full. You've gotta find the good in things. And if we all focus as a community, as a people, as a state and as a country. And if we really focus our time on looking for the good, the good will always get greater. But if you focus on the bad, it'll always get a lot worse. And we've all got to sort of try and find the good in things and really, you know, look at something and make the best out of it and not be so judgmental of somebody or something or some act or whatever it may be you've got to find the good in stuff and it's not always there and if it's not you got to wash your hands of it you know but normally there's some good somewhere covid should be a great lesson to all of us mm -hmm. to all of us that the communities got together for god's sakes i saw so much good in our community the, the, the way that they took care of the police departments and the fire departments and took care of the restaurant tours and the sm small businessmen. I saw money thrown around in my restaurant and I was so happy for my staff that people in the community were picking up food and they were tipping them more than the meal itself. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of good that came out of it. And we need to take this opportunity because everyone thought how bad COVID was. Right. And yeah, it was bad. It was bad and it was hurtful and it was scary. And I agree with all of that. But there was so much good that was still out of it. I, listen, I figured out I could have a patio every year. I love it. I always wanted an outdoor patio, and I'm going to get one out of it. I'm happy and excited. So I think in general, people in general need to start looking for the good in everybody and just say, hey, you know what? There's a good guy. Not there's a good so-and-so or so-and-so and so-and-so. There's a good person, a good man in front of me, a good woman in front of me a good child in front of me. Who cares what they are? Right. There's too much focus on who, what are, whether they're wearing a uniform or whether they're not, or whether they're of an ethnic group or not, or whether they're of a race. And there's good and bad in everybody. Let's mm -hmm. find the good and work together. You definitely got the last <laughs> <laughs> uh, You know what? I'm excited just for you. I'm excited for your vision. I'm excited for the future of the village. Well, listen, and Javez, I, I want to say thank you for hosting this. And I was I'm very honored that you took the time to speak with me. I'm very, very honored. My mother's here. My mom, mom, you do need to come here and say hello real quick. <laughs> uh, this is the matriarch of the family and one of the pillars always. So, hello. mom, you can say hello and just wave hello. to everybody. Hello. How's so, it going, man? My mother is one of the main reasons why I'm sitting where I'm sitting today. I, actually, she's the, all, the only reason. She did get give birth to me but Absolutely. my mother has been very supportive but yeah uh, we were getting back to it 
you know, we just we just all got to stick together. And I'm honored, and I'm and I'm thankful to the citizens of the village of Niles. I just really thank you for putting your faith in us, us Absolutely. as a board, and us as a community. We're 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 your stewards, and we're going to do you right. George, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for being part of the interview. Well, I'm more than happy to. It was my honor to speak. And uh, get us all up to speed on what's going on here in the village of Niles. Absolutely. Thank you. No, thank you for watching. All right, I'm full. Uh, thank you for watching uh, the episode. I hope to see you all soon. Yes, I do play catch up on my omelets.